this video, I'm going to tell you which are my three favorite lens for landscape photography or for any photography. I know that some of you, when thinking of landscape photography, will think about the holy trinity of lenses. But because of my minimalistic approach to photography gear, if you stay tuned, you will find out that I'm not going to tell you to spend all that money or carry all that weight. Welcome to my channel. Here we talk about photography and I make videos just like this one where I share my recommendation about photography gear. So if you're here for the first time, it might be a good idea to subscribe. As I said, today I'm going to talk about landscape photography lenses. And I really like to know which is your favorite go-to lens for your landscape photography. So if you have a chance, why don't you let me know in the comments below? Thank you. So let's get started. And of course, the very first lens will be a, a wide. So let's get started. And of course, the very first lens for landscape photography will be a wide angle lens. And regardless of which camera system you're using, there are multiple options. As you might know, I use a Nikon full frame DSLR, the Nikon D810. And at first, years ago, I thought I needed a a very very wide angle lens, uh, possibly a zoom lens, so that I had uh, multiple focal length possibilities. And uh, I decided to invest quite some money buying the 12 to 24 f 2.8 Nikon lens, which is the first lens of the Holy Trinity. The lens was and possibly still is one of the best wide angle lens in the market. Super sharp, beautiful images. But if you are into long exposure photography like me, that lens has a very, very big limitation. It doesn't have a filter thread. So the solutions to put filters on their lens are very expensive and also very bulky. Beside the fact that that lens decided to roll down into the ocean in Martha's Vineyard um, while I was taking this photo with the 24 to 70 lens. Luckily, I had an insurance. And because my interest in long exposure photography was growing, I decided not to rebuy this lens, but I actually bought a 16 to 35 f4, which is a gray lens, cost half of the price of the 12 to 24. It's much lighter, and of course, it does have a filter thread. Nothing wrong with that lens until I found the one. Yes, in fact, in 2014, Nikon decided, uh, after 30 years, to update its 20 mm lens and released the new Nikon 20 mm f1.8, which I received as a present. And since day one, I loved. As a matter of fact, that lens was always on my camera. Like it is right now. And it is less expensive than, than the 16 to 35. It is lighter, it is less bulky, and it's incredibly sharp. It's really sharp, especially when you use aperture between f8 and f11. In that range, the sharpness is throughout the picture frame. Fantastic. Also, because of the very wide f1.8 aperture, you can use it easily for your night photography, which sometimes I do. And there is something that I really love about a prime lens like the 20 millimeters. It forces me to proactively search and work for my composition. I need to move around more. I need to move closer. I need to move backwards. I basically need to deliberately decide what to keep in the frame and what not. This is for sure my favorite wide angle lens for landscape photography. And here's a few images that I took with that lens.
Lens number two. This might be a surprise because most of you will think, oh, it will be the 24 to 70 millimeters zoom lens. I did have that lens, gray lens, maybe the best lens for travel photography so that you can just keep one lens on and do everything with it, but it is not. My favorite second lens for landscape photography is actually a nifty 50, a lens that everybody should have in their bag, no matter what kind of photography they do it's a super fun prime lens super sharp super inexpensive really really light I love this lens and the way I use this lens for my landscape photography is mainly panoramic photos without going too much into details because possibly I should do a video about how I take my panoramic photos basically I take a sequence of uh, vertical shots on my tripod overlapping by one third and then I merge them in Lightroom and because 50 millimeters is the focal length of the human eye and there is almost no distortion I think this is the ideal lens for panoramic photos There are more expensive options for the 50 millimeters with wider aperture, but I think that the f1.8 is more than enough for landscape photography or street photography. And the third and last lens that I will recommend you for landscape photography is for sure a telephoto lens. Of course, the wide angle will give us this beautiful, comprehensive vistas of the scenery. But the telephoto lens will give us the opportunity to get more intimate, to get more personal, to be more creative, and also to find more composition within the same scenery. So I strongly recommend to have in your bag a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Nikon has, I think, six different 70 to 200 millimeter lens ranging from $4,000 to $1,300. My 70 to 200 is actually the least expensive of them. It is also the lightest and I am very satisfied with the quality of the images. As a matter of fact, this image that got me quite some attention in the last few months was taken with that lens. And I also made a video about it, if you care to watch. In summary, with these three lenses, two prime lenses like the 20 millimeters and the 50 millimeters and one zoom telephoto lens, the 70 to 200 f.4, in my opinion, you will be able to cover 95% of your landscape photography without compromising on quality, without breaking the bank and also containing the size and the weight of your photography gear. I hope you found this information useful. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.